Instagram sensation and supermodel Emily Ratajkowski is probably best known for her jaw-dropping social media posts, but in recent years, this model, swimwear designer, and author has earned even more attention for her interior decorating skills. Instead of simply showing off her ridiculously gorgeous body on Instagram, she's just as likely to show off her statement furniture, or sometimes even both. And really, is it any surprise that this fashionista is as talented at tying together a room as she is a fantastic outfit? Whether it's her brand new home in Echo Park, Los Angeles, her quaint former LA apartment, or even the chic loft that she owns in NYC with her husband, Sebastian Bear McLaird. Emily has managed to turn each space into something that is undeniably her own. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Emily Ratajkowski is a model and actress who has a net worth of about $8 million or more at the time of this recording, so seeing the chic places she owns shouldn't come as much of a surprise. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, this one looking at the properties of Emily Ratajkowski. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat some more, and I'll Let's get into this video. We have a big announcement and we're asking all of you guys for your support. We're launching a brand new channel titled Famous Life and I need you to all go over and subscribe. If you want to know more about your favorite celebrities like Cardi B, Ariana Grande, Elon Musk and everyone else in Hollywood, we will be unearthing tons of crazy info you won't find anywhere else. Be sure to go over and subscribe to our new channel and we will see you over there with new content each and every week. When Emily was first starting off in the entertainment industry as a model and actress, she picked herself up a modest LA apartment that was home to an eclectic mix of Emily's three favorite things. I'm talking art, carpets, and reclaimed furniture. This initial home featured a large and wide open loft space that was located inside the building of a former factory, the remnants of which included exposed pipes that would run across the length of the ceiling, as well as polished concrete floors. What did this building used to be? It was a factory. A mix of seating areas helped cultivate a more intimate feel compared and contrasted against the loft's otherwise wide open spaces. To soften the harshness of those concrete floors, Emily laid down a ton of rugs, including everything from cowhide to a vintage South Asian piece. Meanwhile, her walls were nearly as well covered as her floors, and all through the loft you could find artwork by a whole bunch of artists, including LA-based painter Henry Taylor. What's your favorite piece? Maybe this Catherine Bernhardt doesn't take itself too seriously. I wasn't able to pinpoint exactly when Emily moved into this place or how much she paid for it, but my best guess is that she spent the better part of the 2010s living here before moving on to her first house located in Echo Park. After marrying her hubby Sebastian in a secret ceremony, the couple moved into this $2 million mid-century estate just three months after getting hitched. Tucked behind gates on a double-sized lot, this 1,650-square-foot home is located at the end of a quiet cul-de-sac and was originally built in 1946, but has since been completely remodeled over the subsequent decades. This home features not only a number of large windows that are perfect for flooding their family home with that gorgeous California sunshine, but it also has a generous backyard that can be easily transformed into an entertainer's dream. Back here, you'll find the large deck, private wraparound garden, bubbly hot tub, and a gas fireplace. Only a stone's throw away from there is a separate cottage that's connected to the main house through an open breezeway and can be converted into an office, a gym, or a guest house. Basically, whatever the situation calls for. Moving inside, you're probably about to experience a little bit of deja vu because it seems like Emily has decked this place out in much the same style as her former LA apartments. In other words, lots of carpets, antique furniture, and paintings have this three bedroom, three bathroom home, displaying Emily's distinct sense of style and spades. The living room has a number of interesting pieces, like ceramic jugs created by California artist Grant Levy Lucero. There's also a retro coffee table that complements the sorbet color scheme of the nearly $5,000 provocateur sofa that's located smack dab in the middle of the room. The warehouse style interior of this living room boasts high wood paneled ceilings, 
while the walls are adorned with oodles of Emily's art pieces, which add plenty of color to the otherwise neutral backdrop provided by the walls. Not too long ago, Emily took to Instagram to share an aerial view of this amazing room that revealed all I've already discussed and more, like the exposed brick chimney and that floor to ceiling glass that leads out onto the terrace. In fact, the image itself is so striking that it might take you a second to realize that Emily is totally naked sitting on that couch. Bet you did a double check just now though, didn't you? Alright, moving on before you get too excited, let's check out the dining room next. With its 60s style acrylic chairs, colored candy apple red tucked under a black and white round table, having a meal or two or three in this kitchen is probably a pretty enjoyable time. Especially when you take into consideration what's staring at you directly in the face while you eat. That's right, the dining room is where Emily has decided to place the iconic photo from her 2014 Sports Illustrated shoot where she posed with nothing on but a painted bikini top. This particular reproduction of the image was created by artist Richard Prince and gifted to Emily afterwards. Meanwhile, the nearby kitchen is probably the part of the home that we've seen the least of, but from what I can see, it appears to still feature some original wood and white marble finishing that matches Emily's art deco taste pretty well. Finally, moving upstairs is her master bedroom, which is bursting with natural light and anchored by a few key decorative statements that definitely catch the eye. This includes a bright pattern rug, two renaissance style armchairs, and a large painting, which Emily says is her favorite of all her pieces. Of course, since the room is an ensuite, it also features a large walk-in closet, as well as a full bathroom with dual sinks and skylights. And that's where Emily and her hubby Sebastian, along with their newborn son Sylvester and their lovable German Shepherd Colombo, spend the vast majority of their time living. But when the family just needs to get away from the West Coast, they're lucky enough to have a separate home in the Big Apple. Or at least they do for now. To be honest with you guys, both Emily and Sebastian have been careful not to show off too much of their NYC home. That's probably for one particular reason, but before we get into that, I figure I would give you a taste of what we do know about the place. Emily once took some time to show off her master bedroom in her Manhattan apartment, posting this picture of the city's natural sunlight flooding in through her open sash windows. In general, the little else we've seen of the place more or less matches Emily's style in her other homes. What I mean by that is luxurious retro style fittings that help give the home a warm feel, contrasted against stark white walls and large windows. But the real interesting thing about this place is how much drama it has drummed up recently in Emily and Sebastian's lives. Just a couple of years ago, Emily had to defend her husband after the New York Post ran a story that suggested Sebastian had been taking advantage of a rent loophole for struggling artists that allowed him to skip out on the $4,900 a month in rent. Apparently back in 1982, something called the Loft Law was created that protected artists and other low income tenants from being evicted from their home if the building they were living in did not have a certificate of occupancy or the necessary safety precautions like a fire escape. It turns out that the building Sebastian rents his loft in does not have the necessary occupancy certificate, so Sebastian has simply stopped paying what he owes and built up more than $120,000 in back rent. Meanwhile, Emily is arguing that while yes, her husband is an independent movie producer, he's not as rich as, say, a Hollywood producer. And that means he's simply fighting the good fight to keep his home in the downtown Manhattan, which is located in the very same neighborhood he was once raised in. It's always so hard to choose a side when wealthy landlords are picking fights with world famous celebrities and haggling over money, isn't it? Honestly, no one really comes across looking great in this particular story, but hey, with two different homes, one on each coast, I'm sure Emily and Sebastian and their new family aren't too concerned. Odds are it'll all work out for them one way or another. All right, now that we've checked out where the beautiful Emily Ratajkowski calls home, what did you guys think? Are you into her decorating style? I loved her sunny home in Echo Park and it's definitely unique to say the least. Be sure to tell me what you thought of Emily's distinct interior design style in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, I'm Kara. Don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.